creatives need to to understand what they hold. Um, so Abe, I still am. I still want you to kind of walk me through. I'm a producer on Beat Stars. I sell a non exclusive beat. Mm -hmm. It's selling bunch of licenses. Bunch of people have the beat. Now mm -hmm. I'm in negotiation because somebody wants this exclusively. Yeah. What does what should the terms of that agreement be? How do you how do you honor these licenses? Should these people be able to still stream to that number and then they can't use the song anymore? Then they can't exploit that song anymore because this person bought the beat out? What 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 should that process look like? Right. So like our our exclusive agreements honor all the non-exclusives that are sold prior, you know. So and I would hope the producers, you know, would, would have the, you know, the, the respect to honor all their customers, all their customers as uh, licenses, because, you know, those people are, you know, re reinvesting in you in these microtransactions to help build your business. You should, you should honor what you've given them. Um, oh, but we're starting to see like more and more producers are uh, not, I mean, more and more artists are opting, opting in for like the unlimited non-exclusive license that you know doesn't limit the amount of streams or doesn't limit the amount of things that they can they can do in regards to the DSPs and with that master you know um, it might limit them with sync they're not I don't think they're able to do a lot of sync stuff and some other stuff but at least it allows them to you know it allows them to like put up that single invest in it um, and that's kind of what the that's kind of what the major one of, one of the major labels did with with that uh, mixtape soul beat they just purchased a non-exclusive unlimited license basically you know what I mean? Um, that still allows and honors all the rest of the um, non-exclusive licenses. So, yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, that's, then I think we've, we've created a really cool model, man. Like we've created a cool model. If, if everyone adheres to what's, you know, like using the platform the way it should be meant to be used. Once you start, once you start going outside, once you start going outside and you start, you start like doing some some other negotiations and some other license deals and some other things like that. Like it's, it's hard for us to control that. And, and also it, it helps, it hurts. It, it sure, it, it hurts beat stars from a reputation point of like, oh man, this guy just bought out the beats and now all these non-exclusives are, are not valid anymore um, because of the, the deal that he's signing, right? But, um, but if they, you know, it hurts the producer's reputation even more, you know? It hurts the producer like, reputation even more. Like from well, the it community. hurts the whole community. And you know, yeah. there's just so much that we're dealing with. It's if it's not Jacob Goldman, it's Rolling Stone misrepresenting. His name, you know, his name is Justin Goldman. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> I don't know. Whatever. If it's not, if it's not that bloodsucker, it's it's the Rolling Stone articles. If it's not the Rolling Stone articles, it's Ku on the track on YouTube lying and saying Beat Stars got bottom of the barrel beats and um yeah. you'll get sued if you use them it's just there's so much fuckery yeah. going on surrounding producers who are just trying to make an honest living off of off of their beats and the last and how, thing, many, how many years how many years were the internet producers just kind of like operating in the shadows right many many years right now that we're literally the industry now that the internet producers are literally powering the whole fucking industry we're not in the shadows anymore. So we can't be dumb about our shit anymore. We can't, we can't afford it. Before we were just licensed, you know, prior to us, prior to the internet producers powering every single hit that's coming out right now, prior to that, you know, it was like, we're selling to Joe Schmo and, you know, in Rhode Island or like Virginia, that's, you know, gonna press up a hundred CDs and pass them out, right? That's how it used to be. And, you know, there wasn't really a lot of like, um, you know, sensations coming out of it, not a lot of viral things happening. It was like one in 10 years, you know? So now that it's just so much more common that you guys are literally powering the whole industry, making a lot of people angry, making a lot of people angry. The labels can't, the labels can't do the same deals anymore that they used to. Just, just imagine how many work for hire contracts happen on SoundClick. Like people, these a &Rs probably used to go on there and just like buy bundles of beats and rights and then just re repurpose them into the into the system, you know? Yeah, probably. And but we're seeing other systems emerging yeah. nowadays that aren't beat stars. And I cringe at seeing mm. some of these offers because it'll, you know, royalty free beats, that kind of stuff. 
it's it's just I'm not one of those people that that gets threatened by a race to the bottom, but I I was a member of a certain Facebook group mm-hmm. um where what did worry me, not that people were selling, you know, 30 beats for $5. They can do that all day. It doesn't affect me. What what is a problem is that some of the conversations in that group were so misinformed and it was the the ignorant leading the ignorant. Someone would say, hey, do I get royalties when I give out these beat packs? And someone would reply and say, no, if you're leasing a beat, you don't get shit. Or if you sell that beat exclusively, you're done. That's it. It's like, OK, you're contradicting yourself. Either the leases um, don't allow for any kind of ownership or the the exclusives don't and the fact of the matter is neither is true but because someone on a facebook group or someone in a youtube comment or someone on 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 a forum says it's true for some reason that's a very powerful thing and people will believe them they're not asking a lawyer they're not asking an experienced producer they're asking someone that they don't know from a can of paint and people are ignorant about the music business there's no other business that in my experience, there's no other career field like the music business in which the majority of the people who are involved in it don't understand it. So the, the, the least we can do for ourselves is just understand the business that we're in. Like you said, Abe, that's it. And, and then what we can do if, if we've already gotten to that point and we, and we do feel some sense of responsibility to the to the people around us is spread that information and you know a lot the less we say if the less we know the less we should say 